Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking all about jigging cadence and we're going to be on the ice with Brian Brosdahl. He's going to share a bunch of tips that will help you catch more fish this season. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Whether it's early ice, middle winter, late ice, it's all about jigging cadence to trigger that fish into attacking that bait. And you know, right now I'm, I'm dancing it and jigging it next to the fish and I watch as they come in on my Mega Live. If they turn away, then something went wrong. But remember when you're jigging, if you over, drag, over jig a lure that has say a wax worm or some maggots, especially a wax worm could assume odd shapes, it could spin your bait up. Jigging creates spin and one of the, the quickest ways is to let it unspin. So a lot of times I'll actually push it out of the line and you can get a, a fly reel and use that, but just let, let your line spin. Give it a, give it a few seconds to uh, spin out and then uh, when you're jigging it, just jig it light enough to move that, that bait, even up and down, especially when you got wary bluegills coming up to look at it and just light movements in with a pause and you sometimes have to keep it moving, but slow to keep it from spinning. If you stop and there is some memory, it's going to spin. So I always keep it moving and ever so light. But jigging does create a spin and your, your lure is actually uh, moving a direction based on whatever you have hanging off the back. So sometimes if I'm using plastics, especially a bloodworm tail, I like to not over jig it. So set the lure in your hole like I always tell you in the past and watch your jig in the hole. When you can move it and it's creating motion, recreate that by watching your rod tip. Then drop it down and do it. So the real thing is jig and be comfortable. Whether your chopstick or you're holding it like a bike grip, you want to keep it right at your eye level where you can see it and just move it real slow. And when the fish comes up, Sometimes an uptick bite will lift that rod tip. Sometimes it'll pull it down. But these these rods are really light. This is St. Croix Tungsten Tamer. And this is in the CI. I love it. And I've got two pound test. Lighter the line, and the less memory. One to two pound sun line is so strong compared to anything else in the market. But it's also fluorocarbon, so it has a better sink rate. Works great with my Northland mud bugs, gill getters, pre-rigs. Uh, four inch fry spoons, anything that you're going to use, the bro bling jig, it's going to work great. So light line, the fish have nowhere to go. If you're fishing in brush on the river backwaters or if you're in the Dakotas, you definitely want to go with a little bit heavier line, maybe three pound test. But I've seen a lot of big fish, even walleyes up to 30 inches brought in on two pound test. You don't want to use two pound if you're fishing for big walleyes. But if you're fishing panfish, you're going to get more strikes and your lure is going to behave the way you want it. Jig and cadence is everything, but you also got to have the right size line and the right size and weight of rod. Jigging cadence is extremely important for me. It might even be number two to location, which is, you know, just literally having fish underneath your hole, which tends to be sort of important when you're trying to catch fish. But Brian is one of the better jiggers that I know for sure, and he's got a few more jigging tips for you right now. So a lot of times I'll target fish and I'll work them if you see me hanging out to the reel like this. I'm slow reeling as I'm jigging, and that's oh, that's how I'll get some of the fish to, to strike. If if the fish are starting to move, you see them swimming around, you know they're more active. You might have a, a the the time of day that they're deciding to feed, and just reel it in. A lot of times, when you use Northland tackle, you could set the hook just by reeling. Their hooks are so sharp that they should pierce the skin of a panfish. Just a little baby there. I thought that was fun to catch. Um, so drop it down. And a lot of times I won't go all the way to the bottom. I'll stop halfway. And a lot of the fish are somewhat near the bottom. But I'll stop halfway down and I'll slowly work it down to the fish. Because they know it's there. So sometimes just letting out a little bit of line at a time and slowly bringing it down. It amps up their ferocity as it's getting closer to them. So if you want aggressive fish, jig down to them, but never go right at them. And you'll spook, spook fish 
if you jake and pull them out of a school of fish, it scares the rest of the school. And if you play it in fast motion on a, on, on a camera, it looks like you blow up the school. So don't blow up the school. Jig slow, stay above them. When the fish come up to hit, pull them away from that school, then catch them. That way you can catch more fish without having to hole hop. Next, Brian is gonna break down a few of his key differences as far as presentation goes when he's chasing crappies versus bluegills. So for crappies, I was doing really well using a pre-rigged tungsten. This is impulse plastic and it's a bloodworm and it's pre-rigged on a mud bug head. And the crappies were hammering it. But I had better luck adding a wax worm and I washed a bunch of colors and that glow white worked really good for bluegills. So I just add a wax worm on there. I hook the tip of the wax worm and then come back through. So it's kind of hanging off, but they can't just tug it and rip it off there. And so for crappies, you can really make crappies bite by jigging plastics. Get them subtle movements and they'll come up and they'll, they're sight feeders and so are bluegills. Bluegills need a little scent, they need a little meat, a um, little snack, little pieces falling off the waxworm. Waxworms are great for bluegills. Maggots are good for them too, but waxworms work really well. So you can see here, uh, the contrasting colors with this gold and red works really good. But white, you know, we're in, we're in a bog stain right now, so this is gonna glow really bright. They'll come over, but they're a little bit spooky of super, super bright stuff. So a lot of times when they come over and hold it still, they'll eat it, but they can find it fast. They can see it from farther away. I'm seeing fish activate from much farther away. As I put the grid on my mega live screen, I can see how far they're coming from. And so they're reacting to it from six, eight, 10 feet away, where uh, with other colors, they're reacting as they're two to three feet away. So some key things to know when you're deciding what baits to use. And this really got the crappies. They love bloodworms. That was fantastic. Um, but now I'm focusing on gills and they just want that little gill getter with one waxy. Nothing spectacular, nothing crazy. Works really well and I'm having fun catching everything. For me, the recipe for success when you're trying to catch panfish is number one, finding them. Number two, trying to get them to bite. And then number three, you actually have to land the fish. And a big part of that is bite detection, and that's what Brian's gonna talk about right now. The real thing when you're fishing is detecting bites. And bites come in many different ways. There's the down bite, which pulls the rod down. There's the, the up bite, where it just lifts a little bit. And then there's the bite where it doesn't even move. But on the down bites, you set the hook with a, just a, a sweeping, quick upward movement and like like that right there. And now on the up bites, let me take this fish off and I'll show you that. So a little live display there, not a big one, but it. it. So on the up bites, we'll get it down there so maybe I can catch one live with an up bite. So a lot of times on the up bites, it'll lift up. Well, most of the time I'll, I'll feel that he's there and then set the hook or start reeling it. You know, in, in the open water, you've heard me say that I set the hook with my fishing reel because if you're just jerking it, you don't know if there's slack in your line. Well, when you're vertical, you reel it tight and because it's Northland tackle, the hook is gonna pierce its mouth. So when that fish comes up, I'm gonna feel he's there and then reel it tight or sweep. And then of course, how do you feel when the rod doesn't move at all? A lot of times you can sense something different with your line. The line actually will float a little bit or it's some kind of strangeness, but usually, you know, with my tungsten tamer here, uh, St. Croix rod, all the rods I can see bites, but sometimes it's just a change in your line, like something a little bit more vertical, something, uh, a lift up, just all line has memory because it's that's just the nature of the game. There we go. Oh, <laughs> he came off by the hole. Um, so the real real thing is to remember that movement or no movement is to lift till you feel the fish and then sweep. Uh, a jerk like this, if you just sweep, jerk it, sometimes you're you're pulling the hook right out of the fish. 
but a nice slow move buries that hook and seats it in there. A jerk pops it out of its mouth sometimes. And uh, sometimes you could do no wrong, but it's better to be sharp and on edge so you catch more fish. Well, that's about all we got for you in this video. Special thanks to Brian for sharing some really good tips. And if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below so we have a lot more content coming this winter. And until then, we'll see you in the next one.